Evan Marquette, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women and your personal trainer for love, welcoming you back to the Love You podcast, where you're going to learn everything you need to know about dating relationships, sex, and men from a man's point of view. And today, we are talking about a very personal topic uh, to me, whether you are the difficult one in your relationship. I am the difficult one in my relationship. There's no other way to spin it. Um, I can come up with related euphemisms, type A, opinionated, passionate, informed. Those are all very positive spins. The negative spin, of course, other people's point of view, is difficult, stubborn, argumentative. We all like to think of ourselves as the former. Uh, the problem is other people see us as the latter. And I have spent an inordinate amount of time about this because for all, I like to focus on my good qualities. and. I believe there are some, uh, one has to wade through the bad ones, right? The good comes with the bad, they're on flip sides of the same coin. And uh, instead of being blind to my own flaws, my job doing this holds up a mirror for me to see them every single day. My clients tell me what's wrong with me. My wife reveals my issues. My readers don't hesitate to criticize. You cannot be in my line of work without having a pretty good sense on where you fall in this spectrum. Um, and ultimately, although I might not want to admit it, I have to, I'm difficult. I don't scream, I don't lie, I don't think I'm always right. I don't generally condescend. It's more that I am a professional know-it-all. I'm a voracious reader, I know a little bit about a lot, and I wanna have a say in everything that impacts my life. I'd like to, take control and think my voice matters in every situation, even when it doesn't. So how that usually manifests, I've figured out, and again, maybe this applies to you too, if you are the difficult person, is I tend to ask a lot of questions with almost lawyerly logic. I shoot holes in business partnerships, social plans, travel arrangements, and website designs. In my desire to always grow or change or optimize or get better, I'm prone to being critical and finding fault instead of leaving well enough alone. Thus, the same quality that's helped me achieve many things is the very quality that often holds me back from many things. So for all I've tried, I can't let it go when someone writes back a one sentence reply to a four paragraph email. And I can't let it go when I'm passed around from one health insurance customer service representative to another. And I can't let it go when my wife books me for three children's birthday parties in one weekend without my consent. And I can't let it go when my opinion is misrepresented on my own blog or Facebook fan page. Uh, but as my wife has told me, you don't have to go to every fight you're invited to. And although, believe it or not, I've gotten better over the years, it's another thing that marriage has brought out in me, my default setting is usually to over communicate and explain what I'm thinking under the false impression that if they only understood me, everything would be okay. That is rarely the case. So from potentially one difficult person to another, please know that despite the rewards of someone dating you and being with someone so bright and cultured and opinionated as you, difficult people are the hardest in relationships. Left to your own devices, I highly recommend that if you can't change your personality that much, you choose an easygoing partner, since studies show that the best spouses are the ones who are easygoing, flexible, and willing to compromise. Uh, not necessarily me, not necessarily you. If you wanna have your way all the time, or like me, at least want to have your say, you're very lucky if you find one person who's willing to put up with you. <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Be grateful that you have someone who lets you be you and do everything in your power to promise to do the same thing for your partner in return. And that's what makes relationships work, because that's what we're here for. We're not here to castigate difficult people. We're trying to help difficult people find compatible partners. And two difficult people together creates a whole bunch of friction. And I got uh, 10 years of, of uh, dating history and 14 years of coaching that would uh, validate that point of view. So without further ado, I want to take uh, some questions. Um, the first question comes from, I've got nobody's name. So Sarah, is it? Sarah? Hi. Sarah with the baby? Yes, that's right. Hi. Hey, Sarah with the baby. Yeah, good memory. Um, 
So my question today, um, when I saw the topic, are you the more difficult person in the relationship, I knew right away that I totally am. Um, and the relationship started about over a year ago now. And thanks to your advice largely over the last five years, he's the type of guy that I definitely wouldn't have given the chance to five years ago. But due to all your um, helpful information, basically, I did give him a chance and he sort of fell for me. What, well, he says this like right away, basically. He was really into me and I was sort of so, so about him, but I wanted to give him a chance because um, I'd read a lot of stuff that, that you'd written. Um, and basically what I'm wondering now though, like kind of a year into it is that he's always so helpful. And if ever I have any problems, which I do often, like if ever I have some annoyances or anything with him, um, I always tell him, and then he's always willing to actually listen to me and work on whatever <coughs> problem I have, which is in my prior relationships, I was definitely not used to that. So I guess coming from being the more difficult person in the relationship, I wonder if it's a sustainable relationship though. Like sometimes I'm thinking like, do you ever have any problems? Like I say that to him sometimes. I'm like, do you ever have any complaints yourself or is there anything you want to work on? Um, and I just, in some ways, just waiting for, for the other shoe to drop, but it never, so far, it, it hasn't. So I guess more or less, maybe it's like a two-part question. Like, how do I, A, get not so annoyed with the little things with him, which I think is getting better, um, and B, like, is it sustainable? Is one day he going to say to me, oh, you are so difficult. Like, what's in it for him, I guess? I mean, he's a, he seems to think there's lots for him, but... Um, okay. Did I ask a question? <laughs> there, there's a question in there. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll extract it, but thank you for sharing that with me. Congratulations on your baby. And I <laughs> want to get the timeline right. Yes. You, you have a four-month-old baby. Yeah. And you met this guy a year ago. Yeah, you're right. It uh, was an untraditional start to a relationship. We met, we hit it off right away, and, and by Christmas, oh, I was pregnant, and um, I didn't want to... Uh, he didn't want to have the baby actually we got in a big fight broke up for a couple of months and then now we're back together and we've been living together for seven months now <laughs> okay so uh this isn't textbook this is uh no 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 you probably would not recommend any of that but it's worked out so far yeah okay okay here here, here you are you have a, a baby you have a boyfriend you are living together but not married correct yeah okay is there a reason you're not married I've been married in the past, and it, to be honest, I, I feel like the whole institution let me down, and um, I just feel like this time around, why do I need to get married? He, what, he does want to marry me, though. He's told me many times, and for me, I, I said, don't sure if you eventually want to get married, I would, but for me, it's not that it's not the most meaningful thing to me, like in terms of commitment. Let's, let's read and let you down. Your husband let you down. That's true. Yes. Let's, uh, this, it's a very, very okay. important distinction because you could go on with the rest of your life thinking that it was marriage. Marriage is a neutral institution. It's a vow between two partners to make each other happy every day and to continue to do yes. so over and over again. Marriage itself yeah. is a wonderful institution if you marry the right yeah. person. Okay. Right? So I just want you to let go of the idea that marriage is bad, wrong, scary, constricting. Okay. Right. If anything, it's a place that you can now breathe because you just said in, in, in your sort of question, well, when's the other shoe going to drop? And yeah. what if he finds that I'm too difficult? And guy's yeah. less likely to do that if he's got a ring on his finger. Okay. Right? That's true. Right. The guys who want to get married are usually the ones worth keeping. The guys who are like, nah, man, I need my freedom. Generally not the best partners. True. Okay. So Fair enough. It's, a, it's, a, it's a question that answers itself. You already have a guy who appreciates you. I'm not saying you have to marry him today or tomorrow or forever. Just don't close the door on that. Okay. A. Okay. As far as being the difficult person, um, I don't know you. I don't know him. I only know what you've shared with me. Um, I'm going to ask you a challenging question. Yes. Right. And it's okay if you don't know the answer because most people don't. Okay. What makes you a great girlfriend? Well, I do, like when I'm not annoyed with him, I do think that I'm I caring, I love him, I treat him nicely, I try to make his life easier, I 
I try to do like little things every day that make his life easier. And he does say those things to me that he does love that about me, like more traditional things, I guess, like cooking and making them. I do think he does get a lot from our relationship and he says he loves the type of mother I am and that kind of thing and the home that we have together. What um, kind of, what, what does he get out of the relationship? What kind of girlfriend are you? Cause literally the first thing you said, mm -hmm. not to hold it against you like a yes, lawyer, sure. right? Is when I'm not annoyed with him, I, right? that's like uh, Charles Manson. When I'm not murdering people, I love salsa dancing. Okay, that's true. Um, so why are you so annoyed with him? To be honest, like lately I haven't been because I have to say in the last few months, I've actually fallen really in love with him, which I think for the first little while I was kind of waiting it out. And now that I do really love him and I think he's sort of the guy for me now, I do find myself less annoyed with him to be on, like overall. Um, but why am I so annoyed with him? Because... I guess because he's another human being and a lot of times he, he thinks he has a better way to do things. And Yeah, uh, and, 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 your, and your way clearly is the right way because it's yeah. your way. Yes, exactly. That's tough. It's tough to be so much smarter than everybody else. <laughs> yeah. To know what's best for everybody else. Like, you could, couldn't imagine why someone would be bothered by that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But I've tried to compromise. I definitely, I, I hope I'm not as difficult with him as I was a year ago. Um, but okay. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Or? I don't know. Did you? Have you? Okay. So what well, do well, I well, uh, let's, 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 let's spin it again. Would you like to be married to you? Oh, oh my goodness. Well, I agree. I agree with everything I think. So I guess it might be easy. Um, I, mm, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. I've said very little. I've just let you paint yourself into this corner. <laughs> I know. So, okay, well, all I can say is the, the periods of being annoyed with him are becoming less and less. Um, well, you accelerated everything, to be fair, Sarah, right? Yeah, yes. So, you know, the fact that you're living with him and have a baby together um, yeah. uh, doesn't mean you're obliged to make things work. You could, you could leave each other and move on to greener pastures. It's done all the time. But what I would really recommend is instead of, it's, a, it's a, just a mental shift. Instead of treating him like he's a trial boyfriend who just happens to be the father of your children, yes. try treating him like he's a permanent fixture in your life. Like he is your most prized possession. Okay. Right? And you want to do everything in your power to make him happy. You happen to have a four-month-old baby. Yes. In terms of unconditional love, could you treat your husband like your four-month-old right. baby? Because I'm sure, you're, I'm sure you're more patient and forgiving with your four-month-old baby. Yes, you're right. And he actually says that to me all the time. He says, I just don't understand why you can't treat me like we're 10 years into the relationship and you know that I'm not going anywhere. So perhaps I am bad at that. You're right. I've been dating for so many years, though. It's almost like second nature, right? I, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, you're wise and you're brave for reaching out today. I can't spend a full hour with you. However, however, I, I, I want to leave you with uh, a few things. Okay. Um, let's see, where should I begin? Uh, my book, Why He Disappeared. Yes, you want to make, you want to make, yeah, okay. you want to make sure a guy doesn't disappear. Okay. Internalize that. All right. Um, uh, my Love You program, which there's a two month, uh, free trial. Um, okay. the second three months of it, the first three months are on dating. The second three months are on relationships. Okay. Those three months on relationships, understanding men, yes. relationships, commitment. It's all about communication, being a better partner, understanding compatibility, and really how to, be, how to be married, right? How to get yourself into this place where your relationship is an easy one instead of this sort of this constant battle, okay. right? The things that annoy you about him, says the man has been with his wife for 10 years, will yeah. always annoy you about him. Okay. They're, they're not going to change. Yes, right? that's right. You're going to have to adjust to say, hey, I got to take the bad with the good 
and I'm going to spend more time focusing on the good and appreciating the things he does well mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the things I don't like. John okay. Gottman, a uh, very famous couples counselor, wrote a, wrote a book about, about this kind of stuff. You should have five positive interactions for every one negative interaction. So okay. when you lead with, when I'm not annoyed with him, I cook him dinner. It's, you know, I'm, an, I'm a wonderful wife and sometimes I get annoyed with him. It's, it's flipping that ratio. Okay. Right? Without, again, without, I'm not there, you know, I, I'm not even defending him. He might be the most annoying guy on the planet. I couldn't tell you. But yeah. he's the guy who loves you, is devoted to you, and puts up with you, which yeah. is no small thing, says a guy who has similar personality traits. Yes. Okay. Right? So going into appreciation mode, accept, appreciate, admire. Okay. I like if you that. could accept him as he is without trying to change him, yes. appreciate the many things that he is instead of focusing on what he's not. Mm -hmm. and admire the things that he does well, okay. he is going to feel like a million bucks. You'll see a better husband, a better boyfriend, okay. a more confident man. You'll, a better guy is going to emerge the nicer you are to him. The same way that if you had a friend who was a total bitch, yeah. you wouldn't be inclined to treat her particularly nicely. <laughs> okay. We tend to be nicer to the people who are nicer to us, and it's easy to take our significant other for granted. Okay. Right. So again, I, I know it's sometimes hard to hear, but it's, it's the stuff that I'm constantly getting feedback from everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. The more you could soften, appreciate, accept. Right. You can have a very happy marriage that lasts from here until the day you die. And this guy will be by your side. Right. Okay. And that's a beautiful thing. You've created a life together. Let's, why don't you build the life that's bigger than you and your ego, it's, it's the sum of the parts, right? Okay. There's you and him and your baby, and together we have this thing that's worth preserving, and you will do everything in your power mm -hmm. to make sure this is easy and warm and nurturing, and when he comes home from work, right, you're happy to see him not annoyed with X, Y, and Z, which is human, yes. right? It's human, it's just not effective in making people warm towards you. Okay. Are you, are you okay with that? Did that come across? No, no, that's exactly what I needed to hear. And you're right. He is still warm with me. He has lost so much patience. So yeah. Uh, so so yeah. you, you elevate yourself. I elevate myself to be with my wife. I, otherwise I'd be running a constant karma deficit okay. to have such a great wife. You at a certain point you realize I got to be better and, okay. and you will, and he'll see it. He'll appreciate it. And again, you, you will see a better husband show up. Would you do me a favor, Sarah? Yes. Would you email me and tell me when you've done this? Okay, sure. Please. I really, really okay. want to know because I enjoyed this conversation. I'm sympathetic to where you're at, and I, I hope that you have a, a relationship that turns into a marriage that's worth preserving. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Okay, great. Uh, our next caller is Morgan. Hello, Morgan. How are you? I'm good. You're, you're barely on screen, <laughs> but there you are. May I ask how old I, you are, Morgan? 24. You are the youngest looking 24 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> I know, I get that a lot. I, I, I just wanted to make sure everything we're doing here is legal. Okay, you're 24. How can I be of service <laughs> to you today? So I was actually wondering, you mentioned the last conversation about the idea of compatibility and like when something is worth preserving with someone. So I'm pretty young, but I've been dating this guy for a while. And I see, I sometimes just think that we're not compatible in that I misinterpret a lot of what his advice is. I feel like he might be the more difficult one as kind of um, like life coaching when I don't necessarily need it or like that he's not always right about everything that's going on. He also mm -hmm. seems to like think that my friends don't want what's best for me. And like, just because my friends aren't coaches or like my family members aren't, doesn't mean that he's like the best person in my life. And I have a hard time letting go of like, um, I guess my ego sometimes too. And uh -huh. how do I like take all of his advice for what it is without letting it like threaten me or like my self esteem or like, are we just not compatible necessarily? No, it's you know? a, it, that's a really great question. Do you mind if I, uh, ask you a few things and uh, yeah, share a few things with you? Okay. Um, uh, and again, I'm just, I'm, I'm simplifying it. I try to put myself in everybody's shoes, right? Your boyfriend would be more like me. You'd be more like my wife. And I, yeah. I have a favorite story about 
how when Ooh. I first did first started dating her, I was like, my God, you have to take this course. You have to read this book. And I was evangelical. I was like a guy who found God and I wanted to give it to everybody else. And she said, um, I just want to remind you, uh, you do all this self-help. I'm happier than you are. <laughs> <laughs> so stop trying to fix me. And uh, uh, as I said, 10 years later, um, virtually nothing's changed. I, yeah. I, I mostly respect the fact that um, she's never going to do the things that I do um, and appreciate the many things that she's great at. Uh, I think it's very hard for people who are involved in their own personal growth not to try to spread the word, especially if they found something that worked for them, Morgan. Um, so I, I look at it like trying not to judge either yeah. person. Like, I don't judge you for being resistant. My wife jokes about being the most uh, stubborn, passive person she's ever met, right? It's whatever I'm doing, it might not be working for me, but I'm going to keep on doing it. And don't tell me otherwise. Right. So um, I want to introduce an idea of constructive versus destructive criticism. OK. Um, OK. Constructive criticism is hurtful. Um, it's not intended to be hurtful. Sorry. Destructive criticism. I got it backwards. Destructive criticism is not intended to be hurtful, but it becomes hurtful. Destructive criticism is I want you to change to make me happy. So it would be the equivalent of a guy saying, hey, um, it would be great if you lost 20 pounds, right? That is destructive. It only serves to hurt your self-esteem. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Your, your phone's turned to the side. I don't know how you need to switch, but there you are. Hey, good to see you again. So <laughs> destructive criticism is someone says, hey, Maureen, you have to change for me. Yeah, Construct, and Constructive, let's just get constructive because they're very blurry. They're really close to each other. Constructive is, I want you to change for you. It's actually going to benefit you, right? Right. You don't feel good about yourself when you can't fit into your pants, right? Or when it's bikini season and you feel like you have to wear a t-shirt or a one-piece, right? Like, how can we get you motivated to get healthier so you feel better about yourself? Because I noticed that you're in a bad mood when, you know, when you're carrying an extra 20 pounds. Just the framing of that is completely different. Yeah. One is, is for one you is one, and the other one is for him. Mm -hmm. So it's important when you're understanding someone's intentions, and I don't know your boyfriend, to try to distinguish. Of course, you know, you talked about you know, preserving your ego. We have to remove our ego from the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Is he trying to help me become a better person? Not that anybody's asking to be fixed. You didn't ask him to, to coach you, right? But is he doing it from a place of, I, I noticed you're frustrated at your job. Maybe this will help you improve, right? Is it good intention for you? Or is it, I want you to change because of me? And, and the, the, the intention sort of matters. So how would you describe his attempts to coach you or change you? Not that anybody's asking for their partner to constantly criticize them and be their coach. But mm -hmm. uh, when we're talking about, is this a relationship worth preserving? It's important to know, if, is it coming from a place of love or a place of condescension and arrogance? Um, sometimes it feels like one and sometimes the other. I mean, one example, I guess, of like just something general that happens is um, like just – uh, if I don't have like a clear plan for the future or I um, like have a job, but I want to like travel somewhere and like he acts like it's unstable to do that and like kind of is baffled by he. Okay. So an example of like what he would say is I feel like you're like a puzzle and I only get two pieces of it or like, like you, like you don't even know what direction you want to go in, but I feel like it's okay to still be exploring. Whereas he wants to be like more stable and steady. So it does feel like it's for him. Got it. Um, it could be, that could or, be a values based thing. Right. And again, without judging either of your values. Yeah. Right without judging either of your values, I, I always talk about it's, it's like, you know, relationships where you put your foot in a shoe, it either fits or it doesn't fit. And it's mm -hmm. not the shoe's fault and it's not the foot's fault if it, if it doesn't fit. So whether it fits 
right now it doesn't sound like it fits. I'm not telling you to break up with him, but basically he's asking you to be like him. Right. Yeah. He likes the way he is. He is directed. He's focused. He has a plan. He's got a career track and you're, you know, uh, again, from what you told, what little you told me, you're figuring it out and you're open to not knowing what happens next. Uh, and for some people, that's, that's, a very une- that's a very uneasy place to be. And so when you lo- intertwine your lives, um, if, you're, if he has a day job that keeps him at the office for 50 hours a week, hypothetically, and you are like, I want to move to Paris for a month and live in a hostel, you know, uh, where does that leave him? Right? And it doesn't mean that you're wrong or he's wrong. It just means you might, you might just be on, on different paths at this point in time. Now, maybe you're done exploring by the time you're 30, right? And you're like, okay, now I'm ready to settle down. Now I have figured it out, right? Where, who I want to be, what I want to be. But right now, right, again, and and again, I'm more like him. I'm more inclined to, to structure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a personality type, but it certainly, you know, I could easily spin a universe where I'm like, man, I wish I had more fun in my (laughs) twenties. You know what I mean? So, so it's. I don't want you to feel bad about yourself for being the way you are. It's not that he doesn't have a point about eventually. Right, getting, I could feel better if I had structure. Yeah, too. Again, it's, it's, it's not that he doesn't have a point about, well, eventually you have to get, get your act together. Why not now? Right. right? Why not try something that, right. That doesn't involve uh, drifting, drifting and freelance jobs and all, all the, the turnover that it comes with. So again, I, I I'm not really leaning towards his side as much as being an outside observer and saying, hey, um, this is who I am, this is where I am. You could either accept it or you can't accept it. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who's constantly criticizing me, right? Like, I really, I really like you, I love you, but I didn't hire you as my coach. If you could accept the fact that I'm, this is where I am, this will be great. You're going to have an amazing girlfriend. But if you try to constantly undermine me and turn me into you, I'm going to build up resentment, and that doesn't serve either of us. So it puts right. the ball in his just, court. It puts the ball in his court to say, hey, I'm setting a boundary. I like you for all the reasons that we've been together. This is one thing that upsets me. When you do this, it makes me feel judged. I know it's not your intention. You're actually trying to help me, but it only serves to make me feel judged. All right? So you're not attacking him. You're not making him wrong. You're framing the conversation in such a way that your devoted boyfriend, because boyfriends want to make girlfriends happy. That's their job. If he's doing this, it's, and the byproduct is that it's undermining your faith in him and your relationship, that's an un- unintended consequence, right? He doesn't want to do that. He can't help himself. So the thing you're doing is inadvertently making me feel bad about myself and bad about our relationship. I know that's not your intention, but it's the byproduct of your good intention advice. And so please reconsider the way you treat me. I'm not your daughter. I'm your girlfriend. And I'm, I'm an independent woman. I'm going to do things on my own terms. If, you're, if you could put up with my meandering journey, great. But if you can't, uh, th- that's, that's up to you. But I'm not going to be, be, I'm not going to feel constantly micromanaged or criticized in the relationship. And he, he's going to either step up or step out. Either way, you get what you want. You get free from a guy who can't accept you or you get a guy who's like, Oh, I get it. That's, that's just who Morgan is. And it's hard. Um, it, it is hard. I've, I've talked to a lot of, a lot, a lot of people in their twenties who are in similar positions to you. Um, and they have a goal that are essentially across purposes, right? Which again, doesn't make them wrong, but there's the, I'm 24. I'm exploring life. Um, I want to try new countries. I want to try new jobs. I want to try new men. Right. And then there's the desire for stability to anchor yourself. Right. And not end up, you know, 39 and saying, Jesus, I wish I had a job and I wish I had a husband. Right. Right. Those are two cross purposes and they're both valid. What do you think? No, I agree with you. Um, like, first of all, putting the ball in someone else's court is like very freeing. And it's kind of like the most fair thing to do if you think about it. And it's like also the more efficient than like constantly arguing and like finally getting to the point of why something makes me upset. 
And then with the cross purposes thing, like it's true to like that I need to strike a balance and like maybe even hearing that from him in the first place could like have a lasting effect and that like I want to try and strike a balance between like structure and freedom, you know, it's just slowly like ease my way into like kind of getting How, Do you value this guy? Do you love this guy? Yeah. Okay. So, so let, let's start, let's start here. Right. Uh, uh, I recommend this book all the time. I mention it in my Love You program. It's called Kiss Your Fights Goodbye by Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Um, it's how to talk to a guy without getting into a fight with him. Um, and I, I just gave you a little bit of it. But yeah. let's, let's, start, let's start from the end. Your team. So there's no finger pointing here. We are problem solving. Right. It's an issue. Right. But it's not you're wrong. It's not I'm wrong. It's the same way I'm approaching it with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's you. I understand you. I'm validating you. You are the man with the plan. You like to do this. You like structure. You like order. You like direction. I get it. Here's me. I function differently. Here's what motivates me and inspires me. Right? There's a gap between us. We are a team. How do we bridge that gap together without asking you to change or give up too much or me to change or give up too much? How can we just accept the fact that we're, we're different, but together we're, we're good? Right? How do we just, just say this is about us solving the communication and expectation difference? Right? Mm -hmm. How could you rely on me even though I'm, you know, I'm an explorer? Right? And how could I be with you even though you, you want to impose your standards on me? Right? What, 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 what's the middle ground here that's going to make our relationship work? Because every relationship is a Venn diagram. There's you, there's him, and then there's the space in between. Right? How do we get enough overlap in space that there's a relationship worth, worth preserving? And if we can't find that space, that's nobody's yeah. fault. I just need to find a guy who's more aligned with me. You need to find a woman who's more aligned with you. It takes the emotion and the personalization out of it. Yeah. Then it's more like logical and it's easier to kind of solve. And I, maybe I approach all this stuff logical because emotions really could lead us that's where f fighting comes from is the emotion instead of the attempting to understand well, that's why I started with why is he doing this? Is he trying to hurt you? Is he trying to change you for him? Or does he actually think it's a good idea for you? Cause it's, I, I, I'm a parent to a four year old and a six year old. There's a lot of, Hey, you have to listen to daddy. Right? <laughs> and it, if you don't, you could fall off the roof or you could, you could get burned in the kitchen. Like, I'm not just right. I'm not just telling you these things because I'm a know-it-all. I'm telling you these things because it's it's for the greater good. And you know, uh, again, no one hires a boyfriend to be their father. But yeah, let's not let's like, let's let's we also already have our parents. Sure, but but let, let's not pretend because you could think of something else. You could think of I'm going to make something up. It's the guy who's got a cocaine habit, right? <laughs> and you love him anyway, but you're like. Mm. <laughs> I don't see a happy ending to this, <laughs> right? Does that mean you're a nag? Does that mean you're his mom? Or are you like, I'm not really doing this for me. I'm kind of doing this for you. So it is a, it's kind of a slippery slope, yeah. you know? Yeah. So again, there, there's, the let, let's, re, let's remove yeah. the, the pretense that anybody's right or anybody's wrong, right? We're, we're, we're two people. There's a lot of love worth preserving. What are we going to do to, to respect each other and get on the same page? And, let me know how it goes. I mean, I, you, you, you sound very reasonable here. And if you approach it with him in that reasonable way, it doesn't sound like it'll turn into a fight. It'll be a discussion, but it won't be mm -hmm. a fight. Yeah, conversation. And time will tell if you're compatible. I'm not going to tell you if you're compatible. Your, your mutual response to this conversation will tell if you're compatible. Yeah. Maybe we'll find common ground we didn't like, know we even had. Well, again, it's usually the dedication to the relationship instead of the attachment to being right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just, yeah. okay, you're right. That that's who you are. That's the woman I fell in love with and I don't always love it, but I got to let you do you. Right. Yeah. And I hope he gets there. And should I also mention that I do appreciate his like guidance because like you said in the beginning, when you start going through personal growth, you want to share it with everybody. It like could be that. I mean, the more I think about it now, that could be the case. 
So maybe I should. I, I think again, ac according to that formula from the, yeah. the the kiss your fights goodbye book, that's the first thing you do is start with validation. To appreciate him, tell him why he's a great okay. boyfriend, tell him that you understand him and why he's doing what he's doing. Then you tell him how you feel, the inadvertent effects of him trying to change you is that it's an, it feels like an attack on your ego and it makes you feel less than and it, uh, it makes you feel alienated and distant from him. And, right? and he doesn't want to make you feel that way. That's the byproduct of being a know-it-all. Right? <laughs> yeah. so, so here's why I love you. Here's how you are inadvertently making feel, make me feel. Here's what I think we should do to try to address this as a couple. What do you think? Okay. That's the formula. Yeah. And it, it with the reasonable guy, that conversation goes well. Right. If it turns into like another huge argument, then I don't know. It speaks for itself. Yeah. Speaks for itself. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. You did great. Thank you for your help. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's my job, but it's also my pleasure. <laughs> nice. That's good. Right. Th good thank you for being here. Okay. I'll talk Have to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, I want to thank you for joining me here on the Love You Podcast. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Next week, I am interviewing relationship coach and author Andrea, Andrea Sirtash about her newest venture, Pregnant Dish, for women who are trying and struggling to conceive a child. You do not want to miss this one. If you enjoyed today's coaching, you want to be a future guest on the Love You Podcast, just go to www.evanmarkkatz.com forward slash podcast guest to see our upcoming topics and ask questions on those topics. Remember to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. There's the links below on the YouTube video. Uh, and best of all, I give away free, free, free weekly advice on www.evanmarkkatz.com. Give me your name and email address, and I will help you understand men and find the love that you deserve. See you again next week on the Love You Podcast.